Greetings, and welcome to this program on issues and possibilities of restorative justice. We're all looking forward to this. What more timely a topic on a day when Rochester's mayor calls for expanded commitment to conflict resolution? And what more timely opportunity to learn more about alternatives to the usual way than today, when the National Women's Hall of Fame is inducting several women into its sacred halls. Amazing women who will be honored for their lives of visionary leadership, showing us new paths. One of today's inductees, recognized after a delay for COVID and nearly a century, since her extraordinary and exemplary life, is Emily Howland. Emily based her 101 years in a Quaker crossroads community, Shearwood, a few miles above Cayuga Lake, a hamlet which came to be known as a storm center for reformers. While Emily Howland's calling to work for equal opportunities in education carried her throughout the American South, her commitment to women's suffrage took her throughout New York State. And in her later decades, she became a world traveler. Sherwood was always her home. People came from far and near to offer front parlor tributes to her on the occasion of her centenary. Last weekend, I was privileged to be at Howland Stone Store Museum in Sherwood, participating in the All Are Welcome Here program, which lifted up a long ago example of racial integration and harmony in tiny little crossroads Sherwood. As well, we were highlighting Howland's induction into the Hall of Fame. Some years ago, I became the steward of an undated and unpublished manuscript entitled Bright Shining as the Sun, a monograph on the life and work of Emily Howland as she became known and has been remembered. A pioneer educator, a suffragist, a human rights advocate, and peace visionary. This monograph was researched and authored by the now late Viola Purvis, who served as field secretary for Quakers throughout New York and beyond. As I knew and then grew to respect and love Viola in her later years, I saw it to be totally congruent that she was drawn to the life and witness of Emily Howland. She herself an advocate for peace and justice. An example in Viola's life would be her traveling with an ecumenical goodwill tour to Cuba at a time when such gestures were considered suspect by many Americans, most Americans. Viola examined Emily Howland's life grounded in the Quaker principles of respect for the dignity of all people. Regardless of race, gender, class, or social standing, Viola came to see Emily as a role model for others, a pattern, an example, and in Emily's words, quoting an old Quaker admonition to let our lives speak. Speak to and witness for the values we hold and the world we see. Only when visiting the Howland Stone Store Museum with a tour of the Friends Historical Association, led by Judy Wellman and others of us in the 1816 Farmington Meeting House Project, 
did I come to understand that the Purvis manuscript on Howland's life belonged in the archives and research library at Open Door. This Howland family residence, adjacent to the Howland Stone Store Museum, now restored as a museum and a real treasure trove of artifacts of the women's suffrage movement and human rights efforts here in the Finger Lakes. If you've not visited, I encourage you to put Sherwood on your staycation schedule for next year. I offer gratitude to Catherine Bacon of Old Chatham Friends Meeting for safeguarding Viola's manuscript and to Ruth Hyde Payne of St. Petersburg Friends Meeting for painstakingly retyping the final draft of Viola's work. I was honored to transfer stewardship of this document to the curators at Open Door so that visitors and researchers alike may benefit from Viola's work and perhaps be inspired by Emily Howland to let our lives shine, even bright, shining as the sun. Thank you.